I hate Mondays, man. Well, well it's when we podcast, though. It's when we I all know hang what out day and we friends. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like someone's got a case of the Mondays, but it's me and Liam, and we're both oh, homicidally angry. Why? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, it's okay. There's you your blow, problem. You can blow off some steam through the process of podcasting. Oh, look at all! Look at all that pixel. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. terrific. Well, welcome to. Um, Episode well, sixty nine. Episode sixty nine. It's it's Bob. the sex number. We it's were the gonna sex do number. our comments, but then Roz was not apparently interested in reading two hours worth of mean comments. No, for we'll, some we'll reason, do that at some future date. Yeah, I, for, re, yeah. for some reason, Ross does not thrive on conflict like Liam and I do. I think what I'm gonna do when we do the YouTube comments episode is have my dad come on. I'm gonna make my dad guess for that. He can read some <laughs> gonna of them. We're gonna get your dad to beat up our comments. Yeah, yeah. Right. Old man we- Anderson with his limited range of motion and his oft advertised inability to see good anymore. No, and his constant it- complaints about how much his knee and his back hurts. It's, it's gonna, gonna fucking it, wreck you. It's gonna happen. We're we're gonna do the dad's episode. Uh, yeah, we should <laughs> do the dad's episode. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do not look forward <laughs> to uh, trying to teach my dad how to use my podcasting setup. Yeah. Episode, what is episode this? What is this button do? Ah. Epi- episode 70, our children and it's, uh, our dads. It's just Roasting such us. A, oh <laughs> Roasting my god. Us. I actually thought at one point that, uh, like in episode 100, we get everyone who's ever been on this podcast to just like do a roast. Uh, and then I thought that my self esteem would be too inflicted, would, would be too afflicted. <laughs> And I would just cry. Like, I don't need to hear, like, the, the YouTube comments don't really set me off like they used to, but, like, every so often you get one. Like, there was one today where the guy was, was some asshole was just like, oh, well, you know, is, is introducing their, their, their gender pronouns like a joke. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's like, no, dude, fucking cry about it. And then, and you'll have to bleep this, put a th- and leave the fucking room a big th- That's the fucking mood I'm in today. Hmm. Let's thank, do a thank, podcast. Let's do a podcast. Uh, uh, welcome to Well, There's Your Problem, a podcast where With everyone actionable is actionable threats. <laughs> which, has, which, which does not have actionable threats because I edit them out. You're a coward. <laughs> You're a coward. I'm Justin Rosniak. I'm the person who is talking right now. My pronouns are he and him. Uh, I am Alice Caldwell Kelly. I am the person talking now and notably not making actionable threats against named persons. I didn't do it against a named person. I said some guy in our YouTube comment section. Yeah, our podcast has been described as actionable and my pronouns are she and her. I don't yes. think it's actionable. I told a person to. I'm not saying I'm going to. We're going to have two separate bleeps there. Anyway, doing this sober for the first time in a while. It's me, mm-hmm. your boy, Liam Anderson. Hi, uh, Liam. Hi, Alice. Yay, Liam. It's interesting uh, that we get more actionable threats when you're sober than, than buddy, otherwise. Listen, the Bruins <laughs> choked away an entirely winnable game one on Saturday. Game two is in an hour and 15 minutes. I'm stone cold sober. Let's fucking do this. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, did you say your pronouns? They're he, him. Did I not okay. say that? I know, no, I you missed him because he talked about the Bruins. Oh, yeah. I, this fucking my, hockey my team pronouns, has ruined my life. My pronouns are go and Bruins. Yeah, <laughs> uh, suck it. Uh, uh, every Quebecois commenter we have, all 12 of you. Every Quebecois commenter we have is like some kind of severe masochist, given yeah. how many Quebecois jokes we make. I just, I oh, hate the lose. Habs, man. It's not a real division this year. Mitch Marner is not your boy. Fuck you. Fuck you and fuck your dumb country that you won't let me into anymore. <laughs> Reopen the border, Justin. Reopen the border, Justin. I can't do that. Oh, oh, wrong, Justin. I will address my complaints to what I can only assume is the regional manager of the Tim Hortons. Yes. All right. So, um, what do you see on the screen? Are two trains? I do not see that. I see a Rapidly- Rorschach test. It, yeah. it, 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 they didn't Why does it have look like my many. parents fighting? They did not have very many pixels back then. Uh, um, just the one, and we just, all had yeah. to share it. Yes, exactly. Um, these are two trains approaching each other at a rapid rate of speed. You may notice they are on the same track. 
It's a physics textbook problem. Yeah. This is a this is an interesting one because it is not an accident. It was deliberate, and then caused an accident. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Today we are going to talk about the condom breaking, the crash at oh. Crush. <laughs> Damn, swing and a miss there for me. <laughs> the crash at Crush. Yeah, the, the cra- crash at Crush. The crash Alice. at Crush. America number one. Yes. It's uh it's Crush, Texas. Population forty thousand for one day. <laughs> 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 but first, we have to do the goddamn news. <laughs> Good shot on there. Yes. All mm. right. Chiron, so- whatever. Since I figured, I figured we're an interfaith podcast. Oh. Um, we have all the Abrahamic faiths here. Yeah, we could probably Catholic. we could we could probably hash out this Israel Palestine thing in about and ten honestly, minutes, right? Could. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> we, we uh, oh god, dude, I oh boy, yeah. It's I actually kind of wanted to talk about it for a minute. Um, yeah. Just I posted on Twitter that I that I don't get into Israel Palestine discourse. For my health, which is basically true. Um, now, I've notably been accused of being a Zionist by some teenage freaks. Uh, so I just <laughs> wanted to say that my my genuine and literal position on Israel-Palestine is that Israel is absolutely a genocidal apartheid state. Uh, and I feel like as a Jewish person, although it's sort of a, it, uh, you know, it, it's sort of hard just to, 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 to square the circle, but as a Jewish person, not super cool with atrocities being committed in my name, which they are. It is anti-Semitic to conflate Jews in Israel, but when the Israeli government themselves say, oh, it's a safe place to live for Jews, but then goes, uh, goes ahead and does a genocide, uh, I can't be quiet about that. So, like I said on Twitter, the only legitimate and actual solution is for the United States to cut aid and for one country called country, and they speak a con lang called language. And they have a currency called currency, <laughs> and everyone has equal rights. And then if you do a settlement, uh, you you get uh, kicked off, and you have to go live in the Negev for forty years. <laughs> yeah, one, one state solution, but the state is administered by and named Washington Football Team. Yes. <laughs> Oh, I, Dan Snyder, no! Not again. I was thinking <laughs> we found a way to make Israel worse. <laughs> I was thinking what they really need to do is to bring in uh, 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 someone to run this uh, this this uh, this country. Holy which, shit! Just let us do it. We'll be the triumvirate. <laughs> uh, well, actually, yeah, we could probably do it. But I was thinking what they what they need to do is they need to bring in set just the most incredibly heinous people who hate every other nationality and race. To run the country, I think they need to bring back British Mandatory Palestine. Sounds like a mandate to me. Fuck it, let's go. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, was... <laughs> uh, yes. Seamus, the uh, the Haganah freedom fighter, just <laughs> pops up because he heard someone was shooting at the British. Seamus is Jewish now. Things are very confusing for him and his family. He wears moment, a keep up, but he's not sure why. The moment <laughs> they see. You know, the Limeys coming over the horizon in their Land Rovers and their khakis, you know. We will have peace. We we're will a yes, unifier. Yes. We're a unifier. Yeah, exactly. The, the Israelis and the Palestinians will learn to work together to overthrow the um, monarchist menace. That's right. Um, That's right. It's like releasing a mongoose to, like, uh, you know, solve a snake problem, right? You have a larger problem now. I do. Us. I do want to say yes. that if any single fucking person, any single fucking person in the YouTube comments, Twitter so, tweets or comments some dumbass Zionist shit, mm-hmm. I will. <laughs> I am not dealing <laughs> with your idiotic fucking <laughs> bullshit today. And to those specific teenagers, you know who you are because you can't stop hate listening. Love you too, bud. Uh, shut the fuck up. Go, go touch grass. Mm. I'm going to have to bleep a lot of this. Good. <laughs> yeah, just a, just a two minute long bleep. I'm sober, man. This is, this is the roughest I've been in a while. So if, if, if folks don't know uh, what recently occurred, best as I can tell is there was this kid from Cheltenham Township, right? Oh God. I do yeah. want to know his, his Wawa order. I, okay. So this is my, this is my theory about Netanyahu is I don't think he ever went to a Wawa. 
Because I don't think There's, Wawa was in Cheltenham by uh, 1960 uh, or whatever. Maybe not. I but you figure he he's familiar, right? Like no, he like it was like side cut of right. He went to a Wawa once and was like, "This is the kind of decadence that interfaith relations will I mean, allow he you." In, when yeah. he's in DC, they have Wawas in DC now. It's entirely plausible that he at least went for old times' sake. Can we write to Netanyahu? And I would just, prefer not to. Could you do uh, it? Uh, <laughs> amidst all of the like series of pages and pages of actionable threats, we just go, "Yo, you ever been to a Wawa? What's yeah. your Wawa order? <laughs> what is what tell, is tell me your Wawa, Wawa order, order baby?" <laughs> um, God Almighty! I guess Netanyahu he uh, had a bad election result and decided, "Well, we got to start bombing do a genocide buildings in yeah. Gaza." He's also been like, uh, so I, I think he's been convicted of corruption, but he can't actively be impeached so long as he keeps kind of like holding on to his his limited immunity from like being in power as the prime minister jesus ah. fuck ah yes the only democracy in the middle east yes <laughs> you at least sort of at some point you'd rather just take the mask off right and then you just at least have like the honesty of someone like mbs brutally murdering people in broad daylight as mm -hmm. opposed to hiding behind it between no we're definitely not doing a genocide wink wink nudge nudge yeah, but then you'd lose out on your ability to do sort of like upbeat videos of Israelis on the I've beach. I've been to Tel Aviv. It's startup fine. culture. It's fine. Do you think? Do you think if he did go mask off? I've heard he has a strong Philadelphia accent when he speaks oh, English. Please, no, no. I've please, never, I've never actually please. heard him speak. So you know, Drop but the I'm just bombs down there on uh, on Cheltenham Ave. Down, down <laughs> Shell Name Ave. Yeah. Uh, fr from the creek to down the shore, uh, Palestine will be no more. Yeah. <laughs> it's just him hammered at Keenan's in Wildwood, just yeah. like ordering nuking yeah. like a ran for some it's reason. Like, the Israeli Air Force being like, why have we hired all of these ex Philadelphia PD guys? That guy mm. is just wearing an Eagles jersey over his flight jacket. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So. Um, anyway, now that we've solved the Israel-Palestine crisis, yeah, I do want to say, make us if, a triumvirate. For some, I'll just put us in charge. I do want to say, I have worked on controlled demolitions before. If for some reason you believe that an hour is adequate time to evacuate a 13-story building, you are wrong. <laughs> Yeah, I know, but it's not yeah. the point. The point is the humiliation and <laughs> right, so on and exactly. so on. So yeah, free yeah, Palestine. This is true, yeah. yeah. Free Palestine. Although, once again, we won't have a Palestine or an Israel. We'll have one country, and it's called country. Yeah, Washington <laughs> football team. Washington football team. Uh, peace of the Middle East in our time, as Dan Snyder uh, bring, unifies everyone, and they all become Eagles fans, but they all still have to pay $20 for parking at Dome of the Rock for some reason. Yes. Mm. That sounds about right. Okay. In other news. Stop tagging us. <laughs> we, we are aware. We, we are aware. We thanks to, thanks to you guys. We do issue. know. We, yeah, this is the thing, right? You guys are simultaneously the bane of our fucking lives, but also the best intelligence agency any podcast has. Yes. There is not a beam that cracks anywhere that we are not made aware of it. And this is very useful, the first time we are made aware of it. Yes. Uh, uh, there, there, were, there were many people tagging us in the story about a very large beam cracking. They call this a crack. I would say this is, pretty more, this is more substantial than a crack. It's a shear or something. Yeah, that, this, this entire member has sheared in half, uh, well not in half, but off on the Interstate 40 bridge in Memphis, which I understand is a major truck crossing of the Mississippi River. So uh, this thing's completely shut down, and probably will be for the foreseeable future. And also, river traffic is shut down underneath it, which is hilarious. Yeah, you don't um, want to drop a bridge on somebody's boat. I was about to say, yeah, I mean, I hope, uh, gee, it's a good thing our supply chains are very robust and capable <laughs> of responding to shocks. As yeah, has been evident called, by all the news recently. It's Sorry. called the plenty of time system. Yes. <laughs> yeah, as opposed to just in time logistics, it's plenty of time logistics, and the slogan is just don't worry about it. Also, uh, shout out to our Discord, who just tagged me drunk for no reason at all. We That's have a what Discord? I wanted to... Yeah, we have a di Yeah, we do Are have a Discord. Are you fucking kidding? I, 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 okay. Somebody you... send me the link to the Discord. You... Al, I think, well, you're, I think you're a mod. <laughs> I thought you were a mod on the Discord. <laughs> 
Did you Listen, really not know we worry, had a Discord? I, no, I really you? didn't know we had a yeah, Discord. We have a thriving Discord where the one rule is if you uh, do anything that pisses us off, you get banned. Yes, huh. it's called it's called the Duchy of Grand Liam. It actually works pretty well. I've only had to ban ever like 25 people. <clears throat> also, if you're listening to this, uh, become a patron so you too yeah. can join the Duchy of Grand Liam and stop fucking emailing me about a Patreon RSS feed. We're working on it. Yes. <laughs> this is about that's my airing yeah, of it's, grievances. It, it's it's important. Important structure. <laughs> it's important to keep Liam's email free because he needs that space for all the emails I'm sending him yes. demanding international I shipping on shirts. Union yeah. Pete. I emailed him. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, so now we've done the after show logistics in the middle of the show. I was about yeah. to say we've had a W2YP board meeting. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, we 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 need to we need to you know be transparent for the shareholders. I That's will right. say someone said uh, I forget who and I forget where that they admired the comically adversarial relationship we have with our fans, which is absolutely <laughs> true. Because I'll get like some of the nicest DMs and messages and questions. Free that are, stuff. Like, to the PO stuff. box. Yeah, yeah, that's really sweet. And obviously we appreciate that. I've, you know, some of my favorite follows on Twitter. Uh shout out Zorek, shout out Tom Payne. And then sometimes I check Twitter and I'm just like, I abandoned this podcast and I abandoned all of you to the wolves. <laughs> <laughs> Turning this whole podcast around. Yes. Yeah. We, yeah. Uh so uh stop tagging us. <laughs> <laughs> Do not ever provide valid criticism of us. Yeah, yes. I, yeah, yeah. Do not, do not I, criticize I know, us. Do not tell us anything bad. Do, do not, not perceive us with us in any way. No, these live <laughs> yeah. shows are going to be a hoot. It's just us with our backs to the audience <laughs> for two hours talking amongst ourselves, but never loud enough to hear. Just a series of stage whispers. We're doing Aladdin mass. Dude, my grandmother was so pissed <laughs> off when they got rid of that. She stopped going to church. Mm. <laughs> All I can say is, if you want your religion to contain a certain amount of like language you don't understand, which yeah, why why wouldn't you? Islam, right there. You also, know? Judaism. If also you want Judaism. to get weird enough, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, they brought back the Latin Mass. Did they did. Yeah, you can do a Latin Mass now. It's not required, but you can do it. Is it? Is it like? Is it with it? Uh, is it in communion, or is it some weird set of vacant shit? I don't want to be a part of. No, no, this they brought back. It was under uh, what's his face, uh, Ratzinger. Um, oh, Nazi Pope. Yeah, yeah, the Nazi Pope. Uh, he decided we you can do Latin masses now because I think they were explicitly banned for a while. That's silly. Now it's, Not to be confused you, with you other Nazi Pope, it. Pius yeah. XII. Uh, Pius XII right is the Nazi Pope, right? Yeah. Well, they're, I can't defame them. I'm in America, so. No, they had the one-two punch, which is they brought back the Latin mass, and then they redid the translation of the 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 the, the vulgar mass or whatever you call it. Um, that the Lord know. is with you and with your spirit, or and with your spirit, thing. yeah, That's and that bullshit. got everyone mad. Get out of here! I think that was strategic. Oh, there's a John Mulaney my- bit about that. That's pretty funny, where he like <laughs> goes to a church and looks around and is like, "You're all saying it wrong. What am I doing here?" <laughs> It's like the Protestants putting uh, extra bits on the end of the Lord's just, just, Prayer. Oh yeah, just tacking it on. Yeah, yes. no, we, it was good enough. It's fine. Leave it. Anyway, so yeah, the I forty bridge has a crack in it on account of bringing back the Latin Mass. That's um, right. That makes sense to me. And uh, that's un- the unfortunate station on our route to solving the Israel Palestine conflict. Anyway, uh, n- that's the news. Stations of the cross beam. Ah. Aha. Very funny. I Thank like you. It. I feel like I'm dying. All right. <laughs> so we need to start by talking about public relations and oh. railroad public relations oh, to boy. start out you with. You thought we were hostile. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So in sort of the early days of American railroading, I'm talking like uh, 18, you know, up until like the 1870s, 1880s, 1890s, well, really even up until 1910, right? Um, railroad public relations consisted of not having public relations. Yeah, tell nobody anything ever. Never tell anyone anything. Yes. Yeah, no. Culture never secrecy never works. talk to the media. Don't think about the media. Public <laughs> opinion is irrelevant. Journalists are hacks and charlatans. Uh, what you got to do is maintain good relationships with public officials and politicians. 
right? That's it. Ne- never think about public opinion ever. Um, this rules question mark. <laughs> I it worked pretty good um, for a while, but he started to have some issues as the media got more influential. Fuckers. Because now I won't disagree with them that 1800s journalists were hacks and charlatans. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. forever the main war was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's, that's yeah. not a good look. We, we we threw a small orphan under a train to prove how deadly the trains are. Did this? <laughs> did did the rise of this have anything to do with like the Ashtabula horror, or is this sort of uh, just that coincidental? Is a good, that's a good example of okay. uh, one of those because a lot of these as these railroad as as trains got bigger and faster, you know, railroad accidents got worse. Right, the uteruses were falling out of bodies. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. yeah um, and it was uh, it, it, it was to the extent that even though objectively safety standards were getting better um, because of improved journalism technology like the telegraph news was getting out about railroad accidents uh, more often since more people were working on working on the railroad it was easier to find someone you know to interview who same would, you know, as it ever was you hear about more plane crashes now than you yes. used to or whatever and you could find someone to interview who would air the com- company's dirty laundry right um, you know, and you know, the, 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 with the telegraph, this news reaches newspapers it, all over the country. Right. Um, so, you know, at some point the railroads start to get fed up, uh, and they think, well, we need to have public relations, right. Mm. Or just buy the newspapers ourselves. Uh, they also did that. that oh yeah. The, sh- and- the Sheldon Adelson. <laughs> <laughs> That that was really that was more of a um, that was more of a twentieth century thing though. Mm. Um, the the first solution, you know, the the earliest PR was as simple as issuing a press release. Right? They hadn't thought to do this before. Um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> you try and ask them when a train is going to be in a place, and they're like, "Why do you want to know? Fuck you! Why, 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 <laughs> yeah, fuck you! <laughs> Just pull a derringer on you." Yeah, yeah. We publish the timetable. <laughs> <laughs> you want to see it so bad, tough guy? You want to see it so bad, tough guy? <laughs> <laughs> running, running a railroad used to be a lot more like a criminal enterprise. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, it's um, you know, you had the powers of eminent domain. You had um, you had special protections for, that ordinary businesses couldn't have. You know, running a railroad in the eighteen hundreds sounds like a pretty great gig. Um, the only issue is when if you were in a really big railroad like the Pennsylvania Railroad, which uh, kept uh, killing its presidents. Oh. Um, like on purpose or Just like from, wink wink on purpose. The job would kill you. <laughs> they assassinated them. Got it. Uh, train slowly like, going col- through Dealey Plaza. Collapse of the Roman Empire. Uh you kill the Emperor and then and then your <laughs> president of the Pennsylvania. The, 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 the year of four Pennsylvania Railroad yes. presidents. Yeah, you had to install the Centurions loyal to you. Yeah. Edgar Thompson shot by Tom Scott, who was shot by Alexander Cassett. Uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> um, no, it was just it was such a stressful and high high uh, high intensity job that it just started. It people people had like you know their bodies broke down. <laughs> wow, that um, should happen to more management, I think. Yes. Um, well, you know that's an effective bureaucracy right there. I mean, the yeah, railroad. It's gonna, it's pers- gonna like exert equal pressure on the top and the bottom. Yes. So you know, one of the the effect of the railroad issuing a press release after like an accident or something was extremely positive for their reputation, right? Because uh, reporters who wanted to, they wanted to be accurate, and they were also lazy, right? They would often just reprint details from the press release. Um. <laughs> And nothing has ever changed since. Yeah, nothing has changed since. Yes, stenographers to power is the expression. <laughs> you just get the a, thing and you write the thing. Yes, you know it's the beginning of access journalism, which of course is you know if you want insider in, info, you have to say nice things about the, uh, NFL. the the people you're reporting on. Yeah, exactly. Um, I see you, know, you report, you fraud. <laughs> it's 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 a common complaint about modern political coverage, but. Yeah, in the private sector, it's a billion times worse. Um, you know, you have whole whole sectors of industry that never have negative news come out about them. 
Yeah, because um, they can just freeze you out if you try. Yeah, exactly. Right? Um, yeah, and unless you're uh, unless you're in like a major, like you never see negative coverage of anything in like a trade publication, right? <laughs> I'm trying to think of like it's not a rel- it's a only tangentially related industry, but I'm trying to think of the last time I saw negative news about mining, other than when it kills like fifty workers, and even uh, then. Yeah, exactly. And that's it's, all it's, be done by local news. For more, look at our print media episode. Uh, hmm, exactly. It was nice when we had one of those, but we don't. Yeah, many moons ago. At least we have BuzzFeed listicles now, thank God. <laughs> I always Wh- which dead miner are you? <laughs> Tag your friends down below. Yeah. Yeah, everyone. The, the try guys were... try mining anthracite. <laughs> Every everyone everyone uh everyone thinks they're gonna get John Henry and they actually get like uh uh I don't know who, who's a less impressive guy like crushed on the beam yeah <laughs> um yeah so you know this this allows the company to control the narrative without seeming like you know it, it was uh seeming like it's in charge of the media there are more extreme examples of this now like say the Irving Corporation which operates in the province of New Brunswick in Canada. And also owns all the newspapers in New Brunswick, Canada. Oh, they sure ex- do. Except for mm. one, I think. Um, um, but, you know, to, to, to sort of show how this works, there's an early example. After the really large strikes on the Pennsylvania Railroad in the 1870s, which is probably one of the closest, uh, the closest the country ever got to a general strike. How, how I right? miss, how I never lived it, but how I long to go back. <sighs> yes. Um, the railroad started stockpiling arms and ammunition to use against their employees at their headquarters at Broad Street Station, right? Just n- uh, normal, normal capitalism. Normal shit. capitalism yep. stuff. Yeah. Something like 5,000 rifles, I think, were in the attic. That um, seems a bit excessive. And so, I think about it, a couple decades later, word got out to journalists that the Pennsylvania Railroad had an armory in the attic of Broad Street Station, uh, you know, for use against potential striking employees, uh, the the railroad's PR guy named Ivy Lee, he issued a press release saying that these are not to use against our employees; these are for defense of the passengers. Um, uh-huh. Against, yeah. don't worry about that. <laughs> Cryptids, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mothman, you know how he is, <laughs> and, and he diffused that situation pretty well. Um, <laughs> we were just like, yeah, no, they've got five thousand rifles for I don't know something. It's probably a good idea. Uh, it's probably a good idea, you know. Uh, Wish I, I had listen. five thousand rifles. At these prices, you'd be crazy not to have five thousand rifles. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the Pennsylvania Railroad, strong supporter of the Second Amendment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're doing it like an open carry audit, you know. Yes. <laughs> and so, am I being detained? Am I being detained? Am I being detained? <laughs> They have their own police department, so yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Railroad public relations were for a long time and still are, uh, still is really about keeping bad things out of the news and minimizing, you know, the railroad's culpability in public opinion. But there was also a time when railroad PR included getting the railroad in the news for good mm-hmm. and cool things. This is because you had to transport passengers, a thing which we don't do anymore, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's that's a big part of it. So uh, with that, we have to talk about the Missouri, Kansas, and Texas Railroad. They say rail at railway here. Mm, fancy. Yeah. Yeah. This, this is the, the line. Thumbnail. This is the line. <laughs> this is the line that runs a beautiful cut parlor car, brackets seats free from Hannibal to Chicago Hills. Yes. Oh, it makes a middle of noise. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> All right. It's beautiful. So, the Missouri, Kansas, and Texas Railroad went to Missouri, Kansas, and Texas, right? Mm-hmm. Um, Unlike other railroads, which said they went to the Pacific and then went and, to... And, and then didn't do that. <laughs> and didn't do that. The, the, the Frisco, most famously. There we um, go. The I St. Louis, struggled to remember. Yeah, the St. Louis-San Francisco Railway, uh, I don't think went to either of those places. <laughs> <laughs> Got you most of the way there, maybe. Yeah. At least the Pennsylvania operated in Pennsylvania. Yes. Uh, the Texas and Pacific was another one. I don't think it made it out of Texas. Uh, 
the Missouri, Kansas, and Texas Railroad, also known as the Katy. Uh, yep. You know, you ever heard that song? She took the Katy, left me a mule to ride, right? Mm-hmm. Um, which I forget who that's by. Um, uh, anyway, it was part, it was originally part of the Union Pacific, sort of branched down south from uh, the, uh, the main line out of Nebraska. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it, it went down to uh, Tulsa, Dallas, Waco, Austin, San Antonio. I think there was a branch to Galveston, possibly to Houston. I'm not sure because Houston kind of didn't exist yet. Um, uh, eventually it got merged back into the Union Pacific, but that was in the 1980s. This railroad lasted a long time. Uh, sometimes you even still see some of their cars running around, which is always nice. Huh. Um, so, you know, this railroad had a surplus of old locomotives in 1893, right? And also a lack of business owing to the panic of 1893, right? Which capitalism is very stable. It had something to do with Argentinian and South African land deals. I think. Oh, some fantastic accents on both sides uh, of used, that land I, deal. I, I used yeah. to know about all the panics of the 19th century, but I've long since forgotten since I'm not in undergrad anymore. Jerk van der Klerk trying to yeah. buy a bunch of land in Patagonia and inadvertently yeah. destroying the fucking global economy. It resulted in a run on gold. In America, Ooh. it was on the gold standard at this point which um, caused further problems in the economy, including the collapse of the ongoing railroad bubble. I thought right? crypto guys, like, I, I thought that that didn't happen when we were on the gold standard, because of the uh, gold standard. Uh, wrong. No, you see, gold isn't deflationary enough. <laughs> 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 um... So, uh, and railroads at this point were pretty overextended, right? Um, e- even railroads that were thought to be fairly si- financially secure, like uh, the richest railroad at that time was probably the Reading because of its anthracite fields. Um, in the Panic of 1893, it completely collapsed, went into receivership. Um, <laughs> but there were also like a whole lot of railroads that went, you know, from... Nowhere to East Armpit. Um, <laughs> oh, famous East Armpit. Yes. <laughs> I too have been to Joplin, Missouri. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they had no real reason to exist. So, you know, their finances weren't very Mode. good. They were like super leveraged. You know, they started, you know, w- once there was a little bit of financial problems anywhere in the economy, they went, you know, they, they just collapsed, right? Mm. Um, and sometimes they were consolidated into larger railroads. Sometimes, you know, they, they just disappeared a lot of time, you know, and a lot of times the bigger railroad would also be in reorganization. They'd replace all the, all the people with, uh, guys from the bank, you know, which is always a, a great way for a railroad to be managed. Um, <laughs> And, uh, you know, anyway, that, uh, my point here is the gold standard is stupid. Fiat currency is good. Mm. Um, now we're going to get some complaints on that, but I have a degree in economics and can confirm. Yeah. Wait until we do an episode on cryptocurrency and I just say, no, this is stupid. Fiat currency is good. It no, should be under control of a well, government. How I'm I, sorry. You know, people, you know, child porn and drugs. <laughs> yeah, how are you going to buy your drugs? <laughs> and you can't buy a Tesla with Bitcoin anymore. So No, it's, yeah. the, it's now the only things that it's useful for are buying illegal stuff. Come back down to earth, folks. Mm. Anyway, the Katie is hurting from the panic. <laughs> and they also, before the panic, they just bought a bunch of new locomotives. So Whoa. they have some surplus old locomotives. Um, so one guy has an idea. This is no. William, William George Crush. No, it's not. Yes, Hell it is. Name. Yeah, William Strong George Crush. They just, they just let you keep that name, huh? <laughs> William yeah, my, George. Yeah, my name is Charles Train Accident. <laughs> my name is uh, my my name is uh, Bob Wreck of the Old Ninety Seven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just looking looking at a guy's resume, and it's like, uh, oh, this guy's name is Bad Job Q Work Wreck. 
And it's like, yeah, no, that's uh, that that sounds like it's uh, it, it's very funny, but it actually means uh, in the language of my country, a uh, terrible employee who will destroy your company. Well, I'm 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 John Chase Maryland accident. <laughs> <laughs> so William George Crush was a passenger agent for the Katy, right? And or here he's passenger traffic manager. I can't figure. I'm not sure exactly what his position was in the company but it, it's basically like sort of a general he's somewhere between general manager of passenger traffic you know he's sort of coordinating all the passenger trains on the system he might be somewhere lower than that i don't know um he's he's definitely higher than like you know a station master though well, right? i mean look at how nice the tie is it's got to be is silk, true, right? yeah that yeah, probably is yeah uh, he's also a good friend of P.T. Barnum. Mm. I am not uh, shocked by that statement. Yeah. Cool guys <laughs> hanging out. Cool guys hanging out, yeah. Doing cool guy stuff. So he had an idea. What if we could deal with this locomotive surplus and drum up some business for the railroad at the same time? <laughs> We're going to do this new thing called the publicity stunt. Right? And in, in this case, the publicity stunt, and I wish we still had these because it doesn't feel like we get any good ones anymore. Um, Not on purpose, no. Yeah. The publicity stunt was they were going to crash two trains into each other for a live audience. Dudes rock. Ooh, fucking genius. Dudes rock. <laughs> um, now, funnily enough, in 1893, this was not a new idea. Or it was kind of a new idea, but a couple of railroads tried it before the KD did, right? Um, and several would do it after this incident as well. I think there really? was a... Yes, there was a railroad... Okay. In, they didn't stop doing these until the 30s. Just I like, it's, it. st it's still a good idea. It's yeah. still a good idea. You guys yeah. don't... No, no one remembers what happened last time. No one remembers what happened last time, Barnaby. But this was, this was going to be the biggest one done yet. In 1893, I think it had only been tried a couple times before. At least one was, there was some railroad in Ohio who did it. Um, this is not the one that's on film. If you look through YouTube, there's a, there's a fair number of, there's a couple of old-timey trains running into each other on YouTube. I don't think this is any one of those, though. I don't think this one got filmed, because it was 1893. Um, no, you had one guy with a camera taking a perfectly timed shot with three pixels in it. We'll we'll talk about him in a second. Oh boy. Um, <laughs> all right. So this was going to be the biggest staged railroad crash in history as of 1893 and it was going to be called the Crash at Crush. Crush uh uh named for William George Crush. Just course. fully taking a sort of like monster truck sort of approach here. Yes. Sunday, the Sunday, Sunday. At the municipal arena. <laughs> At Crush, Texas. Um, okay, so what, what, what kind of locomotive are we looking at here um, that we're about to send to its doom? Um, so the, the, the Katie was trying to get rid of some of its old, like, 1870s era 440s, right? That's four guiding wheels, four driving wheels zero trailing wheels, right? The classic American locomotive. It's got all the brass fittings. It's got the all big smoke catcher. The big, the big, yeah, the, the spark arrestor. Yeah, it's got a nice wooden cab. You know, it's got, got all the accoutrement. Um, this is Virginia and Truckee number 22, the Inyo. Uh, and you know, we'll be right back. This is either coal or wood fired. Um, you know, it has a fairly small boiler, about 75 PSI. You know, these, these things were built to be lightweight, easy to navigate, bad track. Um, hmm. And they were much smaller than the, uh, the locomotives that, were, that came after them, right? Huh. You think of these things as being bigger, or at least I do, but then I don't know anything about these. Oh, uh, now these, are, these guys are, are not so big compared to... I, 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 there's there's a couple of good photos of like the world's Columbian exhibition, uh, where they had or no it was a later there was the thirty nine World's Fair they had some of these really old locomotives compared mm. to the newer steam locomotives of the day 
and they're just like they're just like puny little things compared to the new ones. We've run two toy trains into each other, but they are both like live pressure vessels. Yes. Perfect. I think this was uh, one of the one of the things that led them to try this is because they thought, you know, these are these are not not big uh these are not super modern high pressure boilers. These are these are old old things. <laughs> yeah, and when steam when there's like uh, steam contained in a smaller thing, that makes it less dangerous, I assume. Well, I mean, a 75 psi boiler is not a 125 psi boiler, right? <laughs> sure. That's just uh, math, I mean. That's math right there, yeah. <laughs> I'm waiting for Liam to get back because I don't want to confuse him by being on another slide. This is like, already this seems like the safest thing you can possibly do. Yes. How was this intended? Like, I want to get inside the thought process here. How was this intended to make people go, I want to take that railroad? Um... I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sure. Me, yeah. Me, here, I'm going to grab another beer, and then I will attempt to answer that question. <laughs> oh god, oh shit, oh fuck, okay. Uh, hi everybody, how's it going? It's me, your friend Alice. Uh, I woke up directly, I overslept and so, by about half an hour, uh, and I woke up just in time to, to record this podcast, so... Uh, I, I will now be reading out a list of comments which I believe were unfavorable to me, and um, conducting a series of threats against their authors. I'm back. Oh, good timing. Okay. What are you drinking? Um, I have a Yard's Filthy Unfiltered Hazy IPA, which I think I may have mentioned earlier. That's t that's too that's too many names. Like I, all real ale brewers in the UK do this too, where like you'll buy a, a bottle of a bottle of beer or whatever, and it will be like called like something like uh, the Cantankerous Hobgoblin IPA or whatever, and you just I, I just get those and I'm just like, oh go fuck yourself, dude. I don't I don't like this as much as their regular IPA. I gotta say, mm. um, I think this may also have less alcohol in it. Uh, stop yeah, making does. IPAs. I'm 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 waving I'm like the, the communist propaganda thing with the skeleton waving a big banner, but the banner says stop making IPAs. There's too much hops around here. Well this one this one tastes kinda like a fruit juice from all the hops, as opposed to yeah. the other one that tastes kinda like a beer. Um mm. that's my that's that's my, my criticism of, of hazy IPAs is I think a lot of them a lot of them, they just don't, they don't taste like beer. Yeah, um, well, it's the same thing with wine. It's like if you have cheap wine, you can cover up a lot of faults by just adding cheap oak barrels and just have an oak taste. Same with hops. Yeah, because it, it does feel like the hazy IPA fad is, is an excuse to make beer that isn't that good. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because, I, I, you know, sometimes you want a, a, a nice, um, I like a beer I can see through, you know? Sure. Yeah, and I mean, if, if you want a beer that you don't want to see through, there's nothing wrong with going super old school and just having like a, a stout, you know, have a porter. This is true, yeah, but nice stout, nice porter. I haven't mm. had a stout in ages. I was going to start getting back into them over the winter, and then I just didn't do that. Just kept buying the same four beers over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> I think we got Liam back. Yeah, sorry, I uh, had a uh, fair amount of gastrointestinal distress. Oh, do you need to uh, stop recording the podcast? No, I I had my diarrhea, and now I'm good. Oh. Very nice. Congratulations for getting back on the horse, so to speak. Thank you. All right, we're doing great with this podcast. <laughs> all right. Well, so, I'm not, none of us are chewing anything. I'm interrupting you a lot less. So, by yeah. all of the <laughs> metrics that make people complain, my butthole literally feels like it's on fire. Oh, buddy. <laughs> all right. So where so were we? Where was I? We were talking this about is, uh, IPAs. We are talking about, well, yeah, but we were also talking about this locomotive. It's a 440. Yep. Um, you know, this is the kind of locomotive they're trying to crash into another locomotive very similar to it. Although I think this one is a little heavier than the one that they were, um, that they actually wrecked, right? Now, so this is a older locomotive, lower pressure boiler. There are still some risks here. And that risk is a uh, boiler explosion, right? Mm. The forbidden here, spaghetti. 
Yes, this locomotive has turned into Cthulhu owing to a boiler <laughs> explosion. Um, so ordinarily, like the steam locomotive works by generating steam, which goes in the cylinders, and the cylinders uh, move a piston. The piston is, you know, moves the wheels through a series of uh, rods, right? Um, Joe. All boilers have a maximum pressure. That maximum pressure is theoretically regulated by a safety valve. The safety valve will pop uh, when the boiler pressure is too high, let off excess steam, right? Um, you know, you may, if you go watch a steam locomotive in action, sometimes you may see a big plume of steam coming out the top that's not coming out of the smokestack, that's coming out the safety valve because they're uh, running it, you know, I guess you, you, they're, they're free steaming at that point, right? They're producing more steam than they can use, right? Um, so that prevents the boiler from going over pressure and doing bad stuff, right? Because if the pressure is too high, the boiler explodes. Sure. Mm -hmm. yes. And shoots all of the um, all of the tubing on the inside out to yes. make tally tally. Yes, because this, mm -hmm. uh, this is a fire tube boiler. Which means there's a big, big, uh, uh, just you know, just just a big chunk of water in there with tubes running through it that all the heat goes through, right? Opposed to the opposite, a water tube boiler, which is much harder to explode, um, but also more difficult to construct. Um, so, anyway, there's some there's there's a couple ways you can cause a boiler explosion, um. Right. Yeah, take notes that where, you, where you, yeah, exactly. Where you overwhelm the safety valve and cause a situation where, you know, uh, it can't vent pressure quickly enough. Uh, the most common one is that you're operating the locomotive, you're just driving along, and you realize, oh, there is, uh, it, it, you forget to add water to the boiler for a while, right? What this means is that the firebox, which is this bit back here, that's where the fire is, uh, starts to heat up too much. And then the crown sheet, because the firebox doesn't reach the full height of the boiler, the crown sheet starts to become weaker owing to the heat from the fire. And as a result, it eventually fails. And if it fails, then the boiler itself is exposed to atmospheric pressure, right? which means all the water in here, which is held at a temperature higher than the normal boiling point owing to pressure, uh, flash vaporizes into steam Oops. and uh, then blows up, right? Um, and it'll blow out the front, but also it blows out the back into the cab. Oh, no. Um, yeah. <laughs> which is not ideal if you are sitting in the cab. Um, no, no. So, I, don't know. Yeah. I, I, I would simply survive this. Yeah. I, uh, some people R. have. To, R. R. To, to, to you, but I'm built different. Yep. <laughs> so was, uh, this was um, one time, this, this occurred uh, a couple decades ago at the Gettysburg Railroad. Yes, it did. Uh, yeah, huh. that's, a, that's a whole episode. Uh, I, I, I know some people, I, I know a, a friend of the pod, Tom Coletti, wanted to come on for at some point. Um, Luckily, that was a Canadian locomotive, which has this incredible feature where two of the stay bolts in the firebox are weaker than the rest of them. So rather than the boiler exploding, it just blows out two bolts. Oh, are those, um, fuck, what's the word? Fusible plugs? Or am I confusing uh, that with something else? Um, I have no idea. Not important. Not important. Go on yeah. anyway. Because they're rivets, not bolts. Um, hmm. But anyway, so that's the most common way a boiler explosion happens is crown sheet exposure, and then you don't, uh, you know, do anything about it, right? Um, put, and then put water in make, your make thing. Sure, make sure the water's <laughs> yes. above the crown sheet. Um, the other reason a boiler explosion might happen is from corrosion weakening the boiler, or from impacts. Right. Now, what kind of impacts are we talking about? Uh, like crashing <laughs> the train into something. Oh, yes. Well, good thing that's not going to happen here. Yeah, and the what crash kind of crush. idiot would do that? Morons <laughs> who didn't listen to our podcast what kind of about absolute it. Absolute yeah. dipshit would just crash stuff into, into other stuff. <laughs> Did you? I see. You never played Burnout Paradise. 
<laughs> oh god, now that fucking takes me back. If you could get well, Burnout Paradise had like the crash mode sucked in that one. It did. That's it wasn't true. very good. Yeah, That's it was true. Not very good. Yeah. Bring back the the like the crash junction mode from Honestly, previous yeah. burnouts. Oh, yeah, yeah. And let me use a train. Mm. <laughs> let yeah. me use a train. You heard of developers. <laughs> yeah, new new train sim DLC. Uh crash mode. Yes. I I wanna I wanna I want a good uh crash mode in there. I was yeah, always disgusting at roller coaster tycoon where I would just make it crash on purpose. Uh, I'm yeah, but the sick, marketing, sick, the marketing result from this, incredible. <laughs> yes, being cra- intentionally crashed two roller coasters together. Um, <laughs> so, right, boiler explosions, especially on later steam locomotives that had a higher pressure boiler, uh, usually pretty catastrophic. Right, they'd usually just kill the crew instantly. They would often, you know, hurl parts of the locomotive like half a mile away, and we're talking like big parts of the locomotive like you know that one ton of smoke box lands on someone's car right Ooh. um you know this is just sort of an inherent issue with the fire two boiler you got to treat it with respect um now one of the things is that these boilers were generally built well enough that they usually did not explode in impacts right um it's comforting they could explode but they usually did not they they built yeah. pretty heavily had a good time because they had a lot of impacts back then. Yeah, they ran trains into each other a lot back in the day. <laughs> Donk. That exact noise, too, actually. Welcome to Crush, Texas. Thank you. Glad to be here. <laughs> All right. The temporariest city in the state. <laughs> yes. Uh, everything is fleeting in the end, Alice. <laughs> Welcome to Crush, Texas. All flesh is grass. <laughs> <laughs> so Crush had a simple idea. Um, William George Crush. Um, we're going to crash these two trains into each other. We're not going to charge admission. What they no. did charge was $2 to get on an excursion train that would bring you to Crush and then bring you back from anywhere in Texas. Okay. Yeah. So they uh tickets were two dollars. That's still not like even then, that's not a lot of money. I think it was uh the a couple articles uh, quoted that as uh in it adjusted for inflation, that's sixty dollars today. I mean that's you know, you you'd feel spending that, but not not- well, like, they made it worth your while. It's um, you know, mm-hmm. a one-day excursion to the town of Crush, Texas, and they did build a town, right? So Back about, when railroads could just do that. Yeah, no. This is built. This is uh, 14 miles north of Waco, Texas, right? And George Crush went to his friends and borrowed everything he could, right? So he got some rides and attractions from the Chicago Exhibition, brought them down to Crush. He got a big tent from his friend P.T. Barnum and set up a big restaurant in there, right? They built the whole separate track for the two trains that were going to crash into each other. There was no chance of a runaway. Um, Safety first. Safety first, yeah. Um, You know, so they set up grandstands. They had two telegraph offices. They set up a whole temporary system of uh, plumbing. Right. Look at how much more efficient things are now that these days you simply have to hold up your phone, tell people to like, share, and subscribe. <laughs> this would be fucking great if if they had <laughs> if they had phones back then and could have taken a video of this. Yeah. Well, welcome <laughs> to the uh, Beyond the Press uh, hydraulic press channel, second channel. So much great YouTube content oh. out of this. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, YouTube? For a massive uh, trade crash in the background. Bodies scattered around. <laughs> yeah, you have to have the like YouTuber thumbnail where it's like a picture of George Crush in the Gone front dirty? going like, "What the fuck?" And like the, uh, the the actual text is like, "Killed five hundred people." <laughs> uh, open parentheses, serious, all caps, close parentheses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, George Crush has had to post like a notes app apology. Oh yeah, to all my fans, friends, George, and George followers. George Crush uh, turns his uh, his Twitter uh, picture to just a flat black. <laughs> <laughs> he starts doing boxing for some reason. <laughs> so, 
they set up uh they set up they built a huge temporary train station for all the excursion trains um they brought in they brought in a crap load of ice for makeshift air conditioning. The rules. Yeah. Crush Texas was for one day a real place, right? Um and the stunt uh the the, the stunt was an overwhelming ex- uh, success, right? They wound up bringing in more than 40 excursion trains full of paying uh, guests to Crush Texas and something like 40,000 people wound up there. To see the uh, to see the collision, yeah, and everything they can buy is from the railroad. Yes. Genius. you're making bank off of the concessions. Oh yeah, that's where the real I'm money sh- is. Jerry I'm Jones, sure, man. Yeah, two dollar ticket, but ten dollar beer, <laughs> <laughs> and they only have Shiner Bach <laughs> <laughs> and Dr Pepper, the national soda of Texas. Mm. So, it, Crush Texas was the largest city in Texas for one day. That day was September 15th, 1896. Oh, there's a date. There's a date, yeah. Oh, boy. So they, they, they brought two old locomotives. These were uh, two Baldwin 440s from the 1870s, made in beautiful Philadelphia. Um, and uh, these were number 1001 and 999. One of them was red and the other one was green. Look how they massacred my boy. Is there is there like a hammer painted on the tender of the one on the right? And there's something on the on the left. Looks too. like it, yeah. I don't know what's on the other one. Huh. Um ha- hammer and sickle. Hammer and sickle. sickle, yeah. Yeah, yeah Crush was uh secretly a communist. <laughs> <laughs> Both approached each other slowly and met on the track in front of the assembled crowd before the collision, right? Uh, one source said it was like a you know a handshake before dueling, right? Yeah, you t- touch gloves, and then yes. the, the train referee is like on a good clean fight. <laughs> Each train consisted of the locomotive, the tender, and six boxcars, and the boxcars were covered in advertisements for local businesses. I love it. It's like those diner mats. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But at least they didn't do the thing that seems obvious, which is like, oh, we fill these boxcars full of, like, kerosene and lamp oil. That would be pretty funny. <laughs> the, the trains were held together with large chains, in addition to the normal couplers, to ensure that when the train crashed, the boxcars didn't wander too far from the tracks. Um, you know, that'd, that'd be pretty bad if it just sort of rolled into the crowd. Mm. Um, and uh, William Crush had gone and talked to several engineers from the Katy, and they had said, listen, there's no way there could be a boiler explosion in this accident. Um, you know, the impact's just not large enough. Um, I've had experience with these locomotives and blah, 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 right? hmm When the event occurred, they had some issues, right? Uh the main issue was that twice the number of guests attended than what was anticipated. Oh boy. Oh no. Yeah. So the public was supposed to be contained uh, 200 yards from the track, right? Um, but owing to the amount of people, they couldn't maintain the security cordon. Uh, a lot of people were about 100 yards from the track. They had 300 policemen trying to press this whole crowd back, right? And they just couldn't do it. Yeah, railroad cops being like, "Wait a second, these aren't strikers. I don't, yeah, I don't know how to deal with this. You're not allowed to, to shoot them. them. You <laughs> can't shoot them. You can't. You can't like, um, you know, I can't probably, break one of their legs. Yeah, we gotta, we gotta. These are paying. These are paying customers. We have to treat them with a modicum of respect, <laughs> which was a mistake. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, maximum violence towards the crowd at all times. We, we'll get to that. Um, so the trains were supposed to go at 4 p.m., and because the crowd was uncontained, they didn't, right? And so, uh, you know, they're waiting, they're waiting, trying to push the crowd back, crowd's getting unruly, they want to see the crash. Um, they're all drunk off their asses because it's the 19th century. They're right, either, they're barely standing up. I am sure, like, half of them are drunk off their asses, and the other half are in some kind of temperance movement. Uh, carry nation you bitch yeah but like a temperance movement that allows for like the liberal use of cocaine 
Yes. We didn't know what it did back then. It's fine. Yeah, just administering myself some cocaine eye drops. Cocaine and animals. A nice time. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, since it's Texas, it's probably a lot of Germans. So, yeah, they, they probably are pretty, pretty fucking hammered. 19th <laughs> century club <laughs> drugs. Oh, dust, my dusting my big fucking curly sausage on a stick with cocaine and then looking over my shoulder at a guy who's just drunk and being like, this fucking idiot. You got to get on my level. Yeah, like, Me and my I, girlfriend saw you across the room and we really dug your vibe. <laughs> <laughs> you in for this or what? <laughs> Me and my fraulein. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, at 5 p.m., they were an hour late on the collision. William George Crush rode up on his big white horse. Is this Hell a metaphor yes. or is it a literal fucking horse? No, it's a literal horse. He was conducting the event from a big horse. I hope horse. it gets liquefied. Uh, <laughs> Don't, that's and, animal cruelty, but and, and he, decided, he gets liquefied. All right, fuck it. We'll do it live. Oh, no. Hell he gave, yes. the, gave, the order, <laughs> gave the order to let the trains go, right? Now, by this point, they, they're, they've backed up uh, one and a half miles in each direction, right? Um, and each end of the track was at the top of a hill, right? They were to come down a hill and then wreck into each other. Just fully doing bmng.drive shit. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it used to be it used to be you could uh it used to be you could just do bmng stuff in real life. <laughs> <laughs> and then the fucking government made that illegal. Goddamn, Goddamn government, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so all right. Uh, now, the way this was going to work, the crews of the two trains had two jobs. They set the throttle. Their second job was to tie down the whistle. Awesome. So it was just on the whistle the whole way. That's obnoxious. I'd probably I do that first and then do the throttle, but go off. Mm. Well, I, I guess you could do it either way, yeah. Yeah, but you want to hear yourself think, I would think. Mm. Yeah. And then they, and then after four revolutions of the wheels, they jumped off the train, right? Um, and these two trains raced towards each other. Now the railroad had also installed torpedoes on the track for dramatic effect, right? And a torpedo is a little explosive that you mount to the track. Um, and the idea is that if there's some kind of emergency ahead on the line, a train rolls over the torpedo. It blows up. You get the crew's attention. They stop the train. In this case, they're using it for dramatic effect. Again, dudes rock. Yeah. Just ev every mm -hmm. kind of like pyrotechnical <laughs> thing that we have in our arsenal as a 19th century railroad. We we we're going to fire off 5,000 rifles at once just for fun. Yeah, exactly. You know, I'm sure they're like some guys on the sidelines just shooting off guns, maybe some cannon. That'd be cool. And so the rail, so you know, the trains are coming towards each other. The whistles are blaring. They get, they're running over torpedoes, right? Um, and they were each going about forty-five miles an hour when they collided, right? Um, for a combined impact speed of ninety miles an hour, right? Eighteen ninety-six, too. Yeah. Yes. So depending on who you believe. This was either a few years after or a few years before the first train hit 100 miles an hour after, ever. After. <laughs> We're not getting into this. We already had the Israel-Palestine thing. Yeah, it's no, the, the real debate. Was it New York Central 999 or was it City of Truro? You already know the answer. <laughs> Next. <laughs> well, this was the one thing we didn't want to happen. <laughs> uh -oh. oh god so these two trains wrecked into each other combined impact speed 90 miles an hour no one had done 90 miles an hour before or confirmed and no, these aside from that atmospheric railway guy one yes. irishman <laughs> one irishman had done 90 miles an hour yeah <laughs> and these boilers subject to an accident well beyond any anticipated force they could have withstood rather than you know sort of the expected the trains you know sort of they they hit each other, they like bend upwards, and then, you know, the boilers stay intact. They just telescoped right into each other. Uh-oh. And Eep. both of them violently exploded, right? Hell Big yes. plate of spaghetti. <laughs> yes. 
and it sent shrapnel and large pieces of locomotive directly into the crowd. A lot of shrapnel too, because yeah. like aside from everything being made of metal and like not even welds, it's all riveted, right? Yes. Yep. You had a big boiler explosion in the middle of the crowd, and you have panic and mayhem afterwards, right? The crowd turned and ran, but by the time you turned and ran, the damage had been done. Mm. Uh, you know. So amazingly, despite the spoiler explosion happening, only three people were killed, right? Um I think one of them was a, a, a teenager who had a giant wrecking hook smash him right in the face. Oof. Um, a few other people were killed by miscellaneous <laughs> shrapnel. Several dozen people were injured. Um, notably, the man who took this picture, Jarvis Joe Dean of Waco, uh, had a bolt smashed directly into his eye. No, thank you. Which he, a lot of uh, eye trauma on this show lately. Yes, yeah, thanks, I was Roz. about to say. <laughs> um, and he, he lost that eye. Uh, oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, shockingly enough. But he survived. Oh, mm -hmm. good for um, him, I suppose. So this, this was all over in seconds. You know, three dead, several dozen wounded. So the crowd turned around again and ran to gather souvenirs from the destroyed trains. Okay, 19th century Americans were built different. I'll yes. give them that much. This is my one, like, return <laughs> to tradition thing is, like... <laughs> You've just seen a guy get decapitated by a hook. You've seen some <laughs> Final Destination shit all around you. People are like losing eyes and limbs and stuff, and you're like, I'm gonna get a souvenir, shit. Yes. <laughs> the ten, um, uh, on each train, like, the locomotives are completely destroyed, uh, and five of the six boxcars uh, were destroyed on each train. The crowd ran up to them, uh, and uh, just started grabbing a piece of wood and shit like that, and, and, and you know they were just. <laughs> what, what do you even want with a piece of wood that's just been like tangentially uh, involved in a, in a horrible hey, disaster? Hey, disaster. Hey, man, they had to sort of Sam laws and all that shit. People are fucked up, man. <laughs> <laughs> People are fucking gross. <laughs> I love the idea of that of like hanging that like piece of wood with what's clearly like human blood on it. In your living room above your mantle, be like, you know, your great grandpappy ripped that piece of wood out of a breathing man's <laughs> chest. And your great grandpappy left him to die. Yes, he did, because there ain't no winners in the crash of crush, son. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so the, the 10 destroyed boxcars were picked clean in minutes while the injured and dead were carried off. <laughs> shoot or shoot, baby. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm gonna get some free boards. I'm gonna get some free boards. You know how much shit that how much that shit costs right now? Yeah. You were just thinking ahead. This was back in the 19th century when it was good too. <laughs> so yeah, uh, everyone who wasn't injured or dead took the excursion trains back home with a hell of a story. Yeah. Hell yeah. Bunch of time travelers trying to pick clean the like low background radiation steel. <laughs> I would I would time travel back to this event. If if mm. I if I had Stand a time machine, this would definitely be. But uh, uh, yeah, well, I would I would simply stand where the shrapnel doesn't go. Well, <laughs> maybe also just put on some safety glasses, unlike our guy last week. It's a good yeah. point. Yeah. Um, just so, handing the photographer some safety glasses. Yep. Wear this. <laughs> Don't ask where it came from. The future. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you might think that this was a bad thing. Hmm. I might. I won't though, because I I I can picture this being a huge success. Yeah, no, it's it's a yeah. dude's rock, white boy summer, and so on and so on. Yeah, the candy went on for a while after this, so I'm gonna assume it didn't bankrupt them because there weren't any laws back then. I was about to say. <laughs> I'm wondering who took this photograph now that I think about it. Was guy this, this one the, eye. the guy who just lost an eye is like, well, I'm I'm I'm, st De I'm still dedication I'm still to the working. craft, baby. Oh, you only need to one craft, to look down yeah. a viewfinder, yeah. <laughs> so in the aftermath of this incident, right? Okay, three dead, several dozen wounded. Um William George Crush was of course immediately fired from the Katie, right? Oh. No, he wasn't. Um, yeah, he was. Oh, lame. Stupid. The railroad settled individually with the victims, 
Some of them got cash awards up to $10,000. They all got bad. lifetime free passes. Hmm. Back when that was legal. Um, That's not legal. Free passes are illegal since the um, Hepburn Act uh, because ah. the uh, railroads kept uh, giving them to preferred shippers. Uh, it was seen as a corrupt practice. Huh. Uh, <laughs> um, but the event itself made worldwide headlines. You know, it was the biggest news event since whatever the last big news event was. I don't know what it was in 1893. Yeah, like uh, 1893, you just set pro- up. Probably that, yeah. <laughs> uh, to fucking Plessy v. Ferguson. Mm. Uh, Wasn't that pre-Civil War? No. No, no, no Plessy v. Ferguson was 80, well, uh, no, 1896, I'm, and you said right. 96, so... Yeah, this is 1893. Ah, oh, fuck, okay. This is also before the main, because otherwise I was going to say the main. Oh, it's 1898. <laughs> yeah. News um, in, 18, in 1893. Uh, <laughs> Ivory Coast becomes a French colony? That'll do it. You just okay. get a, 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 spinning, like, a spinning newspaper with that on it. That sounds kind of boring. <laughs> um... Okay, we'll just we'll just we'll just make some news up so you can be happy, Roz. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> SS Neuronic sinks without a trace. Future episode, maybe. It's probably something about Napoleon the Third. Grover Cleveland is sworn in. Uh, uh, again. <laughs> uh, um, they finished construction of the Salt Lake Temple. Even worse. Uh, yeah, that's a weird looking building, by the way. Yeah. Um, so contrary to what might be expected, suddenly everyone everywhere knew about the Missouri, Kansas, and Texas Railroad, and it brought them a whole bunch of business and investment. <laughs> Hell yes. Because people suddenly knew about this railroad they didn't know about before. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so upon seeing how much positive publicity this fatal publicity stunt had brought the railroad, Fresh was quietly rehired the following day. Yes, <laughs> my boy! <laughs> free my boy crush, hashtag That's free right. crush. Yeah. <laughs> like Scott Jacqueline. He even kind of sounds like a YouTuber, like a yeah. official real crush has you been said, rehired. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry about my uh, heated railroading moment. <laughs> <laughs> Real dirt has been rehired mm. by the Casey Railroad. Uh, Scott Chaplin, who was in the area at the time, wrote a march about it. Oh, um, they loved writing marches about shit in the nineteenth oh, century. Okay. Just like, I, I've composed something on the sousaphone for this. Fuck off. Entirely fucking normal behavior. And uh, uh, what's his name? What was his nickname? Uh. Uh, so his name jo- was Crush Roz. Uh, no, Eyeless no, no, Joe. No, no. Yeah, Eyeless <laughs> Joe Dean. Oh, Eyeless Joe. I, I, one-eyed Joe Dean. Uh, he put uh, one month later. He put a ad in the Waco newspaper. Uh, Having gotten all the loose screws and other hardware out of my head, am now ready for all photographic business. <laughs> Good for you, man. <laughs> it's yeah. funny when you realize that he's not talking about like medical screws. Like fucking no. getting a plate in your head. He means the shit that came off of a locomotive. <clears throat> yeah, I just have a safety valve embedded in my <laughs> face every time I speak. It whistles. <laughs> yeah, I've got a spark arrester just like hanging out of me. Yeah, out of my ear. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Did anyone learn their lesson from this? Probably oh, not. No. 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 God no. Um. Railroads kept doing stage collisions for audience into the 1930s. Bring um, back. Yeah. Bring them back. This was eventually supplanted by the Demolition Derby, of course. Mm. Um, and uh, today, railroads mainly crash trains accidentally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so if you want to see two trains crash into each other, you've got to have inside information now. Yes, exactly. I mean, I've I've never seen I've seen a train crash. I've never seen a train crash into another train. Bring it back. Bring yes. it back. Exactly. Well, just run a couple of Alcos into each other. The railroads have a lot of surplus power right now. I think it may be time to bring back staged train crashes. Well, we've seen that the the ingredients for this are surplus locomotives and economic crisis. So the next bubble, the next crash 
uh, we will all be writing to various railroads, various class one railroads, asking that they bring this back. You know, Amtrak's uh, Amtrak's going to be retiring the Acellas soon. Ooh. Yeah, you could get a three hundred. Can we get like hour. a public Give campaign? Se- Secretary Buttigieg. We're sorry, we keep calling you Pete Butchug. Please crash <laughs> two sellers directly cr- into each other at, at Vmax at one hundred and fifty miles an hour each. Yeah, three hundred mile per hour combined impact speed. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, gonna, yeah. Put a bunch, gonna, and like the, the the technology now is such that you can put a bunch of dummies and a bunch of cameras in the trains. Oh yeah. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> it's it, that that way you could say it's scientific. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like when Boeing crashed that uh yeah, the, that plane the, into the seven twenty seven. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I like how for a long time uh, the FAA would not release the interior footage of that because like no, it's too horrifying. It's like shut up, give it to us. Yeah, give 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 me the footage. Give me the footage, fucking Werner Hertz, or give me the Grizzly Man tape. I want to see the thing. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I I overall resounding success, except three people who died. Um, advertising several, is a fantastic field. Ever advertising, I you know I I I want to do this sort of thing for a living. Yeah, I don't think Advert- we've learned we've learned nothing from this except that. Train crashes are cool. We should do. Them. <laughs> yeah, stand fu- stand further back. I guess. Yeah, just just let the. You don't. You wouldn't even have to do that now. You would just need some of the NASCAR fencing. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> We've got the fencing from Robot Wars, the like Lexan mm-hmm. barrier. Yeah. Yeah. So. All right, I think we can confidently say that we've learned nothing from this podcast whatsoever. Especially for us, because we're trying to do it, yeah. it again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're like, yeah, I just want to do this thing. Yeah. Yeah. If anything, this episode has made us dumber. Yes, and has made you, the listener, dumber as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what you pay us for. If you yeah, pay us, you should pay us. That to say, give us your money. Give us give your, your money. money so we can release a cathedral episode, hopefully within the month of May. Roz. Look, it should be done by Wednesday. We'll record Thank them. you, Roz. Bonus episodes. Bonus episodes, we have them. All right. We also have a segment on this podcast called Safety Third. God the damn it. Wrong one. I switched the th- That's the wrong one. Shake hands nice. with danger. All there right. We that's go. the right one. I, I switched the drops position thinking I would remember, and then I, I remembered that I had to remember something, but because I only remembered that I had to remember something, I remembered the inverse of what I had to remember. My, a lesson here. I, my brain hurts now. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good day. I've been an avid follower of your podcast since about the time it got its own channel. How the hell you're only at 41,000 subscribers is beyond my understanding. We're being shadow banned. I'm, I'm always up. saying this. Give me the plaque. Give me the plaque. Give me the 50,000 subscribers plaque. plaque. We're being shadow plaque. banned. I don't think we get one for 50,000. I think we get one for 100. God yeah. damn it. Yeah, you gotta get 100,000. Give me half 000, a yeah. plaque. Give me a plaque you've <laughs> yeah. sawn in half. Well, I have obfuscated this story slightly. Holy shit, you really need to keep this one anonymous. We're not okay. getting a guy NJP'd because of our yep. podcast. Yeah, I was about to say. Um, this is an Osprey story. I think you should decide how much background on that nonsense to give your listeners first, but down there where I sarcastically describe it as a paragon of quality and reliability, please remind them of the sarcasm in case they're new here. We have a whole ass Osprey episode. Go the episode first, then circle back to this. With hell of a way to die. It's a great time. Yes. We'll wait. That said, here goes. I'm not sure I was supposed to read this part. Oops. Well, there's no identifying information, so I think we're fine. Mm. This story takes place years ago at a large show-and-tell deal that is occasionally held by the government to get various groups together and show off their new toys and research projects. I love Deep State Con. (laughs) At at this point in time, the V-22 Osprey was just emerging from the R&D phase, as regarded as something akin to the ninth wonder of the world. It was, alas, not yet the paragon of quality and reliability that it became in the fall- ensuing years. 
That's <clears throat> sarcasm, as the man mentioned above. Mm. Um, as the person mentioned above. Keep this anonymous. All right. Doing great, Ross. I don't, I, I'm not sure who decided to pair their experimental hardware with our experimental hardware at this show, but I'm sure they won't make that mistake again. Oh, good. No, but actually, the military rotates project managers for these sorts of things around every few years so that just when someone's getting good at their job, they get sent off to be bad at something else. Who thought that was a good idea? Anyway. The military. The military rules. Yes. Keep, it, keep this picture of the Osprey in your mind. It has a fold-down ramp at the back for two dozen passengers to get out in a hurry when it's time for war stuff. That's the ramp back here, right? At the front of this space is an opening to the cockpit, which has several more seats for the flight crew, and is situated somewhat lower down than the cargo area. So I guess this must go up. And mm then goes down. The project that was being demoed here was a motorcycle-sized ground reconnaissance vehicle. It was powered by an internal combustion engine driving a hydraulic pump, and the wheels were run off of 3,000 PSI hydraulic motors. Right? So this is like, um, this is a hydraulic drive system, right? So the, the, the engine is driving, you know, a pump, and then there's pipes that go down to Hydraulic motors by the wheels. So it's a, it's th a this person was testing Johnny Five, essentially. Yeah, this was used on a couple. I only know it really from like use in locomotives, because mm. um, it's an alternative to like diesel electric traction. Is diesel hydraulic? Um, it lets you do hub motors like it's an electric uh, system, except instead it uses high pressure oil. Cool. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this sort of system is not renowned for efficiency, so there was a big radiator slash heat exchanger for the copious weight heat on top of this vehicle with a very powerful fan blowing air upwards through it. On a, right? re on a reconnaissance vehicle. On a reconnaissance vehicle, You, you yes. want a very large <laughs> heat signature <laughs> yeah. on your reconnaissance vehicle. Okay, fine, nope. whatever. Listen, we only fight, like, guys... Guys who don't own shoes. Gu yeah. Guys who don't own shoes, yeah, own so shoes, this is yeah. probably fine, right? <laughs> <laughs> the heat exchanger had the low-pressure return side of the hydraulic system plumbed through it, which was only 100 or so PSI, so it didn't have to be as strongly built as it would have to be to handle the 3,000 PSI high side. This will become important momentarily. At this stage in the program, the vehicle was being controlled by an operator with a laptop and joystick, who is standing cool. inconspicuously away from the crowd of VIPs <laughs> gathered around the back of the Osprey to watch. Joystick makes it sound like he's got like an old Amiga thing, you know? Probably. It probably is that. I kind, of, I kind of like when the military <laughs> use Xbox controllers for this. There was a radio link to the vehicle, which, it turned out, shared one of the same problems as many other remote control systems. If the comms link was lost, the vehicle kept doing whatever the last command it received told it to do. Yeah, this is Johnny Five. We have made Johnny yeah. Five. Okay. This is not so bad in a field where there are no conductive obstacles to get in the way of the signal. Right? It's a prototype. We'll fix that later. Yeah, instead of a fail safe, it's a fail comedy. <laughs> It's a, it's a fail like cry Alice. laughing emoji. Oh, I like that, Alice. <laughs> During the important demo, important demo is uh, capitalized, um, the vehicle was re remotely driven into the back of the engine-turning pilots on board Osprey. Right as it goes up the ramp, the fuselage gets in the way of the signal and communication is lost. Now the vehicle is rolling forward towards the open hatch to the pit where the pilots <laughs> oh, are. No. Oh my god. Out of control. Did I mention the gas tank? It has a gas tank and a hot it's exhaust fucking. system. <laughs> we, we've inadvertently created a robot that hijacks an Osprey. <laughs> 
Unfortunately, there was a big red emergency stop push button on the vehicle, and the non-trivially ranked officer watching this from the seats inside was able to reach it before hundreds of pounds of vehicle and gasoline fell onto the pilots. Oh, no. Unfortunately, Uh the button was on top of the vehicle, and he had to reach across the heat exchanger to hit it. Remember when I mentioned this was a one-off prototype? The system hadn't really been dialed in yet. The fastest way to stop the wheels was to lower the hydraulic pressure in a hurry, right? The problem was the only other place to send the high-pressure fluid was into the low-pressure side of the system, right? The one meant for like 100 PSI instead of 3,000 PSI. When this happened, the entire heat exchanger blew open and the still-running fan blew gallons of hot, hot oil upwards right across the outstretched arm of the heroic officer. Uh, And they say being a general Mm -hmm. isn't dangerous. Yes. (laughs) And yet, you and yet, you may find yourself <laughs> you may find being yourself. blasted with hydraulic fluid <laughs> by fucking oh, by a deranged Johnny Five attempting to murder the flight crew of an Osprey. <laughs> I understand the burns were not enough to require skin graft. The flight crew. <laughs> <laughs> it works. It Small works. Mercies. Yeah. <laughs> The flight crew were saved this time. Parenthetically, the inside of the Osprey was also now fully lubricated. <laughs> think about cleaning. <laughs> think about cleaning off all the inside of a cargo plane. Yeah, busted on the inside of this Osprey. <laughs> and somehow they gave us more money later. The Maybe United it's... States military is the most <laughs> dudes rock organization <laughs> on the face of the fucking earth. Maybe it was a good thing they moved project managers around so frequently. That's the best safety third we've ever had. That was a really good one. That was really, really good. You're going to have to do better than that from now on, folks. Yeah, this is the bar. This is the bar. It's it's trying to... Listen, all all y'all defense contractors uh, who listen to this program, and uh, you're not a good... you have bad politics if you don't send us your safety thirds. That's right. That is right. Give it. <laughs> give right. Grove a third. I want. I want to hear all your defense contracting stories. <laughs> That's right. But get get yourself in trouble because I need to hear more about these. Yeah, exactly. If if, I if you see send what us... the fucking the the fucking reconnaissance vehicle looked like, you know. Yeah, yeah. I'd love to know what it was. <laughs> mm. Um, it's probably still secret. <laughs> it's, I, I'm, I'm gonna continue to think of it as Johnny Five. That's probably half the reason why so much uh, old military crap is still classified is because it. You they know, don't want us, they don't want they, us to know how stupid they all are. They don't, they, <laughs> yeah, they, yeah, yeah. They're, they're ashamed of it. <laughs> you probably should be. To be fair. <laughs> all right. Well, that was safety third. We have a tight oh, shake hands. Yes. Got one and a half correct drops. Yes. Good job, Alice. I'm proud Thank of you. Thank you. Our next Thank episode you. is on the Tacoma Narrows Bridge. Do we have any plugs before we go? Um, uh, we have a Discord. Apparently, yeah, we do have a Discord. Discord. We're gonna have to. Sorry add if Alice I heard your Discord. feelings earlier about it, Alice. I thought you knew. No, no, no. I, thought I you just knew didn't. You were a mod. <laughs> Yeah, well, fucking send me the link, and I guess I will be, but, uh, well, yeah. Will do. Sorry to advance there, bud. In- international shipping. International shipping. I'm on international it. Shipping. I'm on it. Yeah. We're gonna, Windbreakers. We're gonna, we're gonna record bonus episode on Wednesday. It should be out, hopefully, maybe oh, on recording Monday. recording on Wednesday? Uh, well, I, I, unless that doesn't work. No, that works. I just, uh, uh... F- uh funny thing. I'll have uh, to do it a little later than normal. Yeah. Also, fun, funny thing about that is I'm going to have ha- uh, had a, a tooth freshly pulled out of my face on this Wednesday. This going to be good. Oh, good. Yeah. Except for your art, Alice. Yeah, mm. exactly. All right, I'm going to go uh, lay well, down and We poop. could theoretically do it a different day. No, it's Wednesday's fine. Wednesday's That's going to be funny. All right. All right. Um, in that case, uh, you'll see us next, uh, hear us next with large-faced Alice. 
Um, That's right. Um, yeah. And uh well, Chipmunk Gallus. Yes. <laughs> and uh yeah, and then I can stop feeling bad about taking so long with the bonus episode. It's okay. Yes. Mm. It's my it's my fault for not for saying I was gonna do one and then remembering I didn't know anything about the subject matter and just leaving it to you to do it. We could still do that. I might just write that episode. <laughs> okay. We've still got yes. Cuyahoga sitting around. This is true. Uh, mm. but right, the next well, episode is of course on the Tacoma Naris Bridge that's disaster. Right, that's right. Yes. Um okay, I think that was a podcast. Bye everybody. Uh, Did it. Well, well, feed us in. <laughs>